What's up, Dan Blewett here. Today we're gonna cover how to get mentally tougher over time. So in my career, I had these ups and downs as I reached new levels. So when I first started playing Division One baseball, uh, I wasn't very good. I had to pull myself up, and when you get beat up really bad at any level of any sport, you know, it's tough to say like, oh, I can still do this, I'm still the greatest. You know, like some of us have that armor naturally, but a lot of us don't. And I never had any, uh, any confidence issues as a kid playing baseball as growing up. And I really just ran into a couple of rough patches early in, in Division I baseball and then early in pro baseball. So I had to find ways to get mentally tougher. I had to get ways to bounce back from issues of low confidence. And so I wanted to share some of those with you today. So I've got a great diagram. We're going to go over a couple different concepts and how you can adapt and just get better over the long term, just like you would with your strength and conditioning, with your mechanics, with your swing, with your fielding, with your throwing, with whatever it is. How can we get mentally tougher over time? So the farther we go, the better we are in pressure situations, in slumps, in all that stuff, all right? So as a reminder, if you don't yet, definitely subscribe to my channel. I put out tons of new videos for mental training, for baseball, for softball, for all sports. So if you don't yet subscribe, consider doing it today. There's a little red button and a notification bell to let you know whenever I put out a new video and I put out a couple each week, all right? All right, so the first one, meditate on success and failure. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to have some sort of mental practice where we're consistently visualizing ourselves succeed and also visualizing ourselves failing. And the reason that you'd wanna visualize yourself failing is because when we are scared to fail, when we fear getting embarrassed on the field, uh, not reaching our goals, whatever it is, then it makes it really hard to cope with it when that moment comes. If you're out there and you're like, oh my God, I might blow this game in front of this scout and I might miss my chance, I might miss my promotion. Uh, you don't wanna feel unprepared for that moment. So when you take some time to see yourself maybe just getting torn apart on the field, whatever it is, uh, it can have a positive effect long-term because all right, I've, I've been through that. It's not life or death. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I can bounce back and it's not that big of a deal. So. The ancient uh, warriors, the samurai, they did this a lot because they were gonna be in combat, in heavy sword play, and if they were nervous about dying, they were pretty much just gonna be hesitant, they were gonna be fearing the sword the whole time, and that would be the end of them. They had to just react and be fluid, and so when we have too much fear or unresolved uh, conflict with, with failure, then it makes it really tough for us to be mentally free so we can be fluid out there in competition, all right? All right, the next one, positive self-talk. So with all that stuff, when you get to these rough patches, these periods of slumps, or you know, you've been embarrassed on the field, you've missed a chance, you know, a scout turned you down, whatever it is, uh, you know, we need to continue to give ourselves the mental armor to keep going. So positive self-talk is just that, it's saying, hey, you can do this. No, one more step, you've got this. Uh, you're the greatest, everyone else sucks but me, all that sort of stuff. It, it can be whatever monologue you want. Um, I had some pretty aggressive self-talk personally, like I was not kind to my competitors and I was pretty, uh, I don't know, pretty brutal at times, but it's in my own head. Whatever you need to say to yourself to be good, do it. It doesn't have to be humble. Again, it's your personal monologue. So if you want to be this aggressive player, and have an aggressive self-talk, you know, it's up to you. Um, but when we have this voice in our head that's constantly doubting us, we're saying, you can't do this, you're gonna walk this guy, uh, you're not good enough to play at this level, why would they want you on their team? All that stuff, we all get that. Uh, it just becomes a nightmare and we go downhill really, really fast. We have to reverse that dialogue with good, positive self-talk. Okay, so positive comparison is a, a valuable tool. So what I use this for was when I was feeling nervous before a game, I would say, okay, well, I have a comparable skill set to, let's say, like Cole Hamels. He was an example that I used. He was like a low to mid-90s pitcher. He had a really good curveball, which I had a really good curveball, um, and he had a really good changeup, which I had a pretty good changeup as well. So I said, okay, well, I'm kind of nervous about how I'm going to do today, So, but I wonder how my opponents would feel and how the fans in the stands would feel if uh, Cole Hamels was gonna pitch against them today. They'd be able to probably be like, oh man, like we're gonna get destroyed. He's probably gonna shut us out. And he probably would, right? He'd probably throw a no-hitter you know, against a low-level minor league team. So I said, okay, well, if he would do that, I'm pretty comfortable to him. Like, okay, I'll throw a shutout today too. Like, sometimes we can just convince ourselves that we can't 
and comparing yourself to someone who we know for a fact can do it and has done it uh, can just be a benefit. Like, look, I could be as good as him. I've got some similar skills. I could be as good as her. I have some similar skills. Um, you know, use that as a tool to compare yourself to remind you that you can do things that maybe you haven't done before or that you're just maybe feeling a little bit unconfident and that can boost you back up. So positive comparison I think is really valuable, especially if, you, if you're feeling down or you're feeling uncertain about your potential level of performance. Okay, the next one. So we can't be mentally tougher over time if we're not tested. So we have to face challenges. And there were tons of times in my playing career where I went out there and I was just gassed. Like my coach said, hey, can you give me another inning? I'm like, sure. And I knew I couldn't, but I went out there anyway and I gave it my best. And a lot of times I got through it. And I was like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. I figured I was gonna get lit up, uh, but I didn't. So. We have to face those challenges. You have to do stuff. I mean, there's there's so many cliches, like, oh, do something every day that scares you, but there's legitimacy to all that. So you have to challenge yourself, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's in conditioning, whether it's on the field, uh, just like signing up for challenges. Maybe it's doing stuff that puts you out of your comfort zone in the off season. There's a lot of different ways, but we have to face challenges to know that we can do new things, to push us, to be, to me be mentally tougher and, and stronger and more resilient. So. I don't think you can be this tough person in a box. I think you have to be out there and, and get tested. So when someone says, hey, like, who wants to volunteer for this tough conditioning thing or this tough thing in the weight room or who wants to take uh, to do this on the, on the field, whatever it is, there's lots of different challenges that you should raise your hand for and you should sign yourself up for, put yourself out of your comfort zone. Because if you don't face challenges, Again, that's sort of like the mechanism for you to get mentally tougher over time and figure out where your limits are, okay? So make sure you're testing yourself on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. Okay, next one is general <laughs> swagger. So, you know, you see all these athletes at high levels and they have a swagger about them, right? They like puff out their chest, they dress a certain way, they walk a certain way, uh, they have maybe a certain arrogance about them. You know, being humble is great. It's, and for me, I think being humble means shedding uh, the glory that gets shined upon you when you do well and giving it to other people. Like, you know, if you're the star player of the team and they're interviewing after the game, you don't have to be like, yeah, 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 I put the team on my back. Like, no, you can say, you know what? Did you see his performance? Did you see her performance? Uh, you know, my coach really helped me get here. Like, you, you shine that light on other people. That's, to me, what being humble is. Um, because inside, you can't be humble. You have to think you're the best. You have to think everyone else is just brutal in comparison to you. And obviously, like we know that's not true. There's tons of great players, but I'm the best, and everyone else is, not, is nothing compared to me. That needs to be your sort of overall mindset as far as like making sure you can sort of insulate yourself against the ups and downs and just reminding yourself that you're great and that you can do things. So. This general swagger, like I see, I work with lots of athletes and I see kids walk in, they have this very like sort of scared, like turtle shell, like pulling their head in mentality. And you just know that that's gonna translate on the field. Then you see the other kids come in who maybe aren't as good as they think they are, but they walk around with their chest puffed out and they think they're, you know, hot stuff. Uh, and that helps, that helps it play up. It makes them better than maybe that maybe they are whether it's sort of faking it to your make it or whatever, but having a swagger about you, you know, the way you walk, the, the posture, looking people in the eyes or looking at your floor at the feet, all those things, they matter. And your overall, when you walk around with a big chest and you walk around proud and you look people in the eyes and, and you have a constant like flow of, of positivity and like maybe a little bit of aggression and, and arrogance in your own head, uh, that helps you like sort of live that life and be that that strong confident player like i in no way want to advocate for you being arrogant for you looking down on other people that's certainly not the thing um but in your own head you need to remind yourself because there's going to be vastly more doubt that flows in over time and you have to insulate yourself against that give yourself some armor and just remind yourself that you can do things you know like when i went up against hitters that were better than me that played at higher levels I still thought I was gonna dominate them. And that was a learned condition from years and years and years of just sort of like walking with my chest puffed out. Even when I wasn't doing well, even when I maybe wasn't sure that I could actually do those things, maybe I, even when I wasn't sure that I was that person. Like at times I was this person, and at times I was that person. So you have to really try to like live that persona. It's not being fake, 
it's just like, look, I'm gonna walk tall because that's what I wanna be. You know what I mean? So, okay, let's go on to the next one here. So lastly is experience. You have to get out there and play. You have to get out there and push yourself. Um, you can't become a champion sitting on the sidelines and just training in the gym. There's more players than ever, I think, especially uh, in baseball as an example, they just wanna train to get better at baseball. But you have to be out there on the field to feel the emotions, to feel the ups and, ups and downs, to feel the adrenaline and the fear when you have the bases loaded and no one out, stuff like that. You have to be out there doing it. You have to have experience to get mentally better at all that stuff. So that comes with all that. That also comes back to pushing yourself, to facing challenges. So experience matters. So if you're new to the sport, you're gonna get out there and you're gonna feel overwhelmed at times when the game speeds up on you. And the more you play, the better that's gonna get. So experience means lots of different things, not just like, you know, minutes and innings and games and all that stuff, but just, just being an athlete and doing all those things and trying new things and pushing yourself and pushing your limits and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And then years and years and years, you learn over time because I know the more times I was in a bases loaded situation, the more comfortable I was in it, right? And no one's comfortable, I don't think, you know, going bungee jumping for the first time or jumping out of an airplane for the first time. But on the 80th jump, they still might be super high on adrenaline and all this other stuff, but they've also done it. Like they know how to handle it if something goes wrong or what it's gonna feel like. And so a lot of those, those, those prickly parts of it that really make you nervous and scared and doubt yourself they get kind of shaved away because you've done it before. Like I know what it's like to be in the bases loaded. I know how I have to make my first pitch to get it started. Then it's just like any other bat. I need to get one out at a time. I make one pitch at a time and I'll eventually get myself out. Like you learn that over time. And before you're in that situation, it's hard to really understand what it's like to get out of a jam like that. That's just an example, all right? So, but experience matters. So if you're not as mentally tough as you are today, do something today that will help you get better and just know that in a couple years, like I'm gonna be the person that I wanna be and I'll have tons of confidence and I'll be able to put my team on my back when they need it and uh, I'll be able to reach my goals. So hopefully this helped. I know tons of athletes, uh, they struggle with the mental side of the game. They struggle with thinking they're good enough. They struggle with getting tougher and, and handling adversity and handling doubt and fear and challenges. Uh, so I wanted to put this little diagram today and talk to you a little bit about what it takes to get mentally stronger over time. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with someone, and, uh, and leave me a comment below or shoot me an email. So if you have any questions about the mental side of your sport, definitely hit me up and I'll definitely get back to you. All right, hope you enjoy this and I'll see you next week.